One technique to try in logo design is to trace over a photo. So in this example, we're going to trace over a photo. Here's the, let me see it here. Here's the original photo. I just took it a lake. And then the final result is just a pretty simple logo. And you'll notice it's not an exact trace because we need to simplify it. You do want to stylize it, but you also want to keep it simple. Otherwise, it's just going to be, you know, a very busy logo. All right, so I'm going to go to File, New. Just go ahead and File, New, and hit OK. I'm going to zoom in here. And then just go to File, Place. And I'm going to use the same photo from earlier. This is a swan here. Click and let go. And it's a little bit large. It doesn't fit on the artboard here. So if you do want it to fit on the artboard, we can just resize it. So just click and drag the corner there. Hold Shift to maintain the original proportion. And if you're zoomed in, you can remember to do Control on the PC or Command on the Mac and plus or minus, and you'll zoom in and zoom out. All right, so we have our image here, and I have layers. If you don't have that, we do need to do that for these tracing exercises. So just go to Window and go to Layers. Make sure that's checked. I also have Pathfinder up and then the Tools panel, of course, up. I'm actually going to bring up the color. Well, I do have the color. It's just not on screen. Let me pull it up here so you can see it. There we go. All right, we need to just draw these really just three areas, right, in a background. So four shapes, uh, unless we create a couple shapes here and combine them in the Pathfinder. But uh, so for this, I'm going to just create a new layer. I like to just have a new layer for every single element just to keep it simple. So go ahead and choose the pen tool for this example. I'm going to set the fill to none and then the stroke to just something that we can see. Uh, one point is fine. Uh, we don't want to fill because as you draw it, it would start to cover up some of the area. It would be difficult to trace over here. So for this one, I'm just going to trace over the body here. So click and let go, click and let go, click and let go. Then I got to curve it. So click and drag. Just remember using the pen tool here. Um, I need to reset this angle here. So I'm going to click that again. Something like that. Trying to use as few points as possible. And this will just come straight over here. And then this back area here, I'm going to create one, like so. Reset that angle. Create another one. I'm actually going to bring it over here a little bit. It's not a, an exact trace, right? And I'm going to make one more right over here. All right. And bring this back up here, click and drag, something like that. Just need to reset that angle. All right. All right, so something like that. It doesn't matter that that goes across there because this is going to be below uh, the other elements like the beak and that area there. If any of you are biologists, you know what, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what that is called, but you would know. I know that this is the eye here. So. Uh, we can go ahead and fill this in if we want. So I'm going to flip that so there's no stroke and a fill. And this will be white for this example. Oops. Set the fill to white. All right. So it's going to look like that. And we can always adjust it later, of course. But So I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to toggle the visibility of that layer that we just created because I want to actually be able to see this beak here. I'm going to zoom in a bit. And I'm going to set the fill and stroke to none again. And just do the beak here. Just click that there. Make sure you get the pen tool selected. And I'm going to have to reset that angle here. And we're wanting to keep it simple. So we don't want to get every single little detail and curve and all that. All right, something like that. And this one, let's choose some kind of orangish color. That's good. Then I'm going to toggle the visibility of that by clicking the icon on the layers panel. And I'm going to create a fourth layer here. And set this fill and stroke to none. I'm just going to create this area here. I'm actually going to combine it with the eye here. So I'm going to make that a little bit larger, like so. I have something basic here, and I can fill this with black. And if we still need to adjust it, if you're like, you know, I need to move this over a little bit, you can do that. So just with the white direct selection tool, 
Can move that over. And we're going to see if we need to do that in a second. But um, so we have that there. I'm going to bring back the beak. It's it's below this one, which is good. And then the body there. Let me control or command minus to zoom out. Hit the icon of the photo, but of course we can't see it because this is white. So what you can do is just create a new layer and draw out a rectangle for a background. I'm going to make it some other color. All right, and that looks pretty good. If yours aren't perfectly aligned up, you can zoom in. Like right here, if you think that's just too blocky, you can move it around. You can adjust the anchor points and, of course, the curves on either side of the anchor point. So I'll move that up a little bit, something like that. So if you wanted it just to be flush along there, same thing here, you have to bring. And if you find, you know, you just want to toggle some of those, you can do that. So I'll do something like this. I want to click right on there, bring that over a little bit. Then you can toggle those back. A uh, quick tip, remember, if we want to select, say, like, we're on this layer here, and we want to select something below it, like, right now I'm on, let's say I'm on this one, but I really want to select the black area. All right, you can just click over here, indicate selected art. So you click, and you it adds the color to the little box over there. That means you're selecting it, so you don't have to move things temporarily or do object arrange, send backwards, send forward, just to be able to select something. So hopefully you've learned a lot, uh, got some ideas for using a photo. If the photo is yours, you're fine as far as copyright goes. If the photo, now this isn't attorney advice, but uh, if the photo is someone else's and you trace over it and it's still easily recognizable, you know, you'd, you'd think, oh, that looks just like that photo that I saw. You can run into problems with copyright. So I would just say, you know, even if it is derivative, it just depends on where you are and what those laws are. So I'd say if you do draw over some other photo that make it so different from the photo that a person wouldn't confuse the two, okay? So once you trace over a photo like this, uh, if you find it too busy, you can go back and revisit it. Uh, this is the one we just did. This is the one I did earlier. Either way, I actually like the angle a little bit better on the beak here on this example. It is a little bit crooked though, so you can go back, of course, and rotate and adjust and make things simpler or combine this technique with some of the other techniques we've been doing, like freeform drawing on the side or using negative space with Pathfinder. So have fun and practice that. Uh, just use different photos for inspiration, whether it be a natural setting like a forest or animal like this, or if it's even something that is manufactured or some kind of cityscape. I'll see you in the next lesson.